Hi everyone. What I'm going to be talking to you about is the significance of something called the Oracle problem and specifically how it relates to the capacity that our space has to build useful things and to evolve beyond tokenization into a space that's defined by something more useful than tokens. Tokens are very useful, but the reality is that people building things should have the capacity to build things other than tokenization of assets and other than ownership. They should be able to make smart contracts something that replaces all other forms of digital agreement. Now, the core of this problem is that traditionally blockchains have a problem, the Oracle problem, where they're not able to speak with external data sources. What this means is that you can't build events into a smart contract. So events are things like market price changes, the location of goods, weather data for insurance. The reason our space is so heavily focused and defined really by tokens is because that's what you can build today. If you can go beyond building tokens, then the space can become entirely redefined because if you look at the digital agreements out in the world, the majority of them aren't about ownership. The majority of them are about other more useful economic activity. So as I said, our, our space is basically defined by tokens and Though tokens are very good, this is a limitation that events like this can help overcome. Personally, I think what's going to happen is very clear. You're going to see a shift from I'm generating tokens, I'm generating more tokens, I'm generating more tokens year after year, to I'm building decentralized financial products. And those decentralized financial products begin to redefine how financial products should work. And, and DeFi is really the beginning of this trend towards using blockchain infrastructure, not just for tokens, but for digital contracts that do something other than ownership and transfer of ownership, right? Now, why am I so confident about this idea? Well, the, the reality is I've seen this happen, this shift in how our space is defined two times already. The first shift was from something called Bitcoin multi-signature as the only smart contract to something called FAT protocols where you had to write a smart contract as part of the protocol itself. This resulted in months to sometimes over a year of development time to make one single smart contract, even one related to tokenization or decentralized exchange of those tokens. Then Ethereum, the, the organization and the movement and the piece of software that over 2,000 developers showed up to work on and that was able to, to generate enough interest to fill this whole building with smart people, that generated another shift. And that shift was from you know, protocol-based smart contracts that took months or years to make to scriptable smart contracts. And that shift is very significant because it basically underpins pretty much 90 plus percent of the value creation in our industry that isn't Bitcoin. That isn't just I own Bitcoin. So this shift in what people could do with blockchain infrastructure went on to redefine our industry to something that focuses on tokenization and uniquely provides that value, right? So that shift was very significant and I went through both of these shifts. The third shift that we're starting to see now is from one where you can simply make scriptable smart contracts that are related to tokenization because that is the type of data that blockchains are very good for processing natively into an environment where data and events allow the creation of decentralized finance, smart contract insurance, decentralized trade finance, various fraud proof gaming. So all the other forms of digital agreement that exist out in the world can all have the trustless computational benefits and transparency of this infrastructure. The only thing that's really necessary is the capacity for blockchain infrastructure to be used around events data, to consume events data, to generate events data. Because the reality is that the majority of contracts out in the world are about events. They're not about ownership transfer. Now, what I'm here to do is partly from a selfish point of view, but partly from a point of view of redefining our industry, encourage you to build something that is not a token. Take this as a challenge to build something that is a decentralized financial product, a piece of insurance, some kind of digital agreement that is about an event that creates sufficient economic value and benefits from the trust minimizing capabilities of blockchain infrastructure, right? This is what our body of work is about. This is what we seek to help developers do. We seek to make all of these inputs and output accessible to you as developers. And our sincere hope is that many long nights that we've spent on making this and bringing this to you is something that will be used to create an entirely new crop of next generation smart contract that are not about generating a token and transferring it, but are about providing people crop insurance or making a decentralized financial infrastructure 
that eliminates systemic financial risk or provides all kinds of financial products to emerging markets or the 50 other great value-creating things that can come to define our space other than I generated a token. By the way, generated a token is cool, and that's a great mechanism for enabling a lot of the things I'm talking about in these contracts, but it is not the only thing that our space is or should be about. Now, just to bring this into clearer perspective, I think some examples would be helpful. So one of the first examples is what do we mean by truly decentralized finance, right? It's decentralized finance, which means that the end-to-end -end relationship between the financial product and everything that it needs to rely on is decentralized. That reliance, in the case of decentralized financial products like money markets, lending markets, derivatives, basically means that you need to rely on data and that if you're going to call it a decentralized financial product or a truly decentralized financial product, you should seek to provide the guarantees that define a decentralized financial product. So this is one challenge that you could engage in at this hackathon. You could seek to build a new type of truly decentralized financial product that implements decentralization, not just in words, but in practice, both at the core computational level with something like Ethereum and at the data level with something like Chainlink and the data providers we give access to. Likewise, if you want to go a level further, you can build a truly decentralized financial product that is actually usable because people actually want to receive payment from it because it can send them payment in the format they want to receive. This is another challenge that I think developers should take on in this space. They are taking it on. I'm seeing more and more high quality teams from traditional industries come in and build these types of products. But if you're here at a hackathon and you're going to spend two days on building something anyway, why not build something really, really cool that's truly decentralized and can actually pay people in a useful way? I mean, that's just cool. I mean, that's exciting. I'm excited. This excites, and this excites me, this, this, it does. This is more exciting than I made a token, I sent a token. I mean, it is. I mean, why not give it a shot? I would. The good news is that this has become a lot easier. We've made this a lot easier. There's a lot of people in our community, in our core team, that have spent hours and hours, long nights, making huge amounts of data available to you on chain so that you can build something useful. So whereas before, you could write the Solidity code and you had to write the integration and you had to do a lot of work to get the Oracle mechanism working, now you write the Solidity code in a minute, two minutes, half an hour, you have access to all the data you need. So this is a significant change in what blockchain infrastructure can provide to you as a developer. It's a change that if you take advantage of it, you can quickly build something much better than people that do not know about this capability. And so therefore, you could just build something cool quicker. You can build something cooler quicker. That's, I mean, that's, I think that's what progress is really about. Here's an example of a price reference data network related to gold price. So you can build a decentralized financial product that's truly decentralized around the extremely lucrative, long, maybe longest running market in the world, the gold market. You could do that today, probably in a number of hours. Solidity development tools have, have reached a, a very high level of quality, and now you have great data. So if before there was something stopping you from building a decentralized financial product that did something useful, I think the reality is the people that realize that that limitation is gone or going away will build the products that do the DeFi things that come to revolutionize the space. And, and really, I, you know, the sooner you build it, like, that really could be you that builds that decentralized financial product. There's, there's no reason it can't, just like the people who built the first Solidity tokens were, were successful. Another example is insurance markets. You can get insurance data from something like NOAA from one node or from multiple nodes, and once again, pay correctly to the right markets. And once again, we provide an infrastructure where you could get all this weather insurance data, generate all these payments in something that takes hours instead of days or weeks. So this is once again a significant improvement. Another thing that I'm extremely excited to, we're basically announcing today and, and making uh, available to people here is our, our partnership with, with the great people at Offchain Flabs, a truly gifted team of extremely talented people that have made something called Arbitrum. Arbitrum basically allows your contracts to reach entirely new heights of scalability and cost efficiency. So if before, you could not cover the costs of running a certain type of contract on chain, or if Ethereum didn't have the scalability characteristics of a gaming contract, a decentralized financial contract, an insurance contract, now, with the help of something like uh, Arbitrum and, and Chainlink's ability to provide Arbitrum to you in a decentralized node network of validators, you can submit 
Solidity code computed in an extremely efficient way on a highly reliable set of validators return that computation back to something called the Arbitrum contract for, for basically an arbitration period. And then after that arbitration period, that off-chain computation that was extremely scalable, extremely cost-efficient, is, is something that is almost as stress minimized as Ethereum itself. So I, I think the thing I'm really here to tell you is that the limitations that were in the space even a year ago about making decentralized financial products, making events-driven contracts, making scalable smart contract code. A lot of these limitations are falling away. And I think the people that take advantage of this new environment that allows them to build new, truly useful things will be the people that come to build the use cases which redefine our industry. And I think you are those people. I am the person that works pretty much almost all the time to bring these capabilities to you and you are the extremely talented people who are going to take those capabilities and I personally believe are going to redefine the space once again by building the use cases which truly come to take us from blockchains are about those token things to blockchains are the dominant form of digital agreement that powers the global financial industry, the global trade finance industry, the global insurance industry in a way that trickles down and benefits the average person in ways that I unfortunately do not have enough time to explain because I have been way over time for way too long. One last kind of shameless plug here. If this sounds right to you and you're really smart and you like remote and you like good ideas to win in, in conversations about what should actually happen with the company, you should really come talk to us. If you meet those criteria, we're hiring really good people. Everybody likes working with us. It's a lot of fun. It's great. You, you really, if, if this sounds right to you, you should talk to us. We have a lot of open roles. It's really fun. Thank you very much.